pastries and pies taste delicious by the prowler martha montgomery owned a little bakery shop in a quiet little village nestled along the eastern shore martha's masterpieces it was called business wasn't bad but it wasn't great either financially things were starting to get tight for martha her regular clientele just wasn't enough to keep the business afloat for much longer and supplies were starting to get expensive martha was worried about the business needless to say and her home life wasn't much better on one october day things came to a head for sweet little martha as she was closing shop one night her boyfriend came in to walk her home it had been a rough day business was slow customers rude and due to a lack of funds wasn't able to order a full week's worth of supplies all martha wanted to do was close up and go home how much money did you make today her boyfriend asked she sighed i don't really want to talk about it it was a rotten day it's always a rotten day with you martha why even keep this place open it never makes any money do you ever stop and think maybe you're the reason this place doesn't make any money that your pastries just aren't good her boyfriend said smugly now this wasn't the first time poor martha had to hear these abuses slung at her direction but at that very moment she decided it would be the last that's it she screamed martha flew into a rage picked up her rolling pin and bludgeoned him to death as she tried to compose herself she panicked at what to do she placed a bloodied rolling pin on the body and dragged him to the kitchen in the back she thought and thought until it became clear i know what to do she exclaimed since times are so tough and supplies are short at the moment this corpse will give me everything i need to get by for the week martha began carving the meat to perfection and rubbing it with all the finest herbs and spices ah yes perfect she thought after i cook this it will go lovely with my meat pies after she was done only the bones were left she had a kiln out back she piled the bones in an empty flour sack dragged the bones to the kiln and cremated them with flour being the cost of what it is this will be perfect for my pastries half flour half bone dust that will help my flour supply last martha worked all through the night baking up a storm and by the morning the display cases were filled with the freshest baked delights martha wrote up a new sign promptly advertising the freshest of ingredients an all-new menu everything half off that should get them here she thought not long after she opened she noticed the mayor's car pull up in front of her shop the portly older gentleman got out of his car and walked in he proceeded to tell her he was on his way to a meeting and smelled a heavenly aroma wafting from her shop she thanked the mayor and gave him a complimentary meat pie this is a brand new recipe mr mayor and i hope you like it mm. oh my martha this is delicious i don't know what you've been doing but this is the best pie i've ever tasted she thanked the mayor and he proceeded to order a dozen pies and pastries to take with him to the meeting i'm going to tell everyone he said as he walked out the door she smiled and prepared for the day the word got out by midday and martha's shop had never seen such business everyone was in love with martha's new menu this continued for the week pies and pastries were flying off the shelves but on that sunday martha was realizing that her supplies were running low as she was closing the door opened and in walked the mayor and his wife oh martha i hope we're not too late we were hoping to catch you before you closed martha looked up and smiled ah yes mr mayor 
you and your lovely wife are just in time, she said with a wide smile on her face and holding her rolling pin behind her back. The next morning, Martha opened up the shop with the display cases full of the freshest pastries and the most delicious smells wafting through the neighborhood. As she wiped the countertop, she noticed a stranger about to enter the shop. Oh my, what is that smell? I can smell it from down the street. It's simply delicious. Everything looks so good, I don't know what to get. Thank you, Martha said. Try the pastry, best in the village, I'm told. And you must have a meat pie. That's what I'm known for. And I just finished baking this batch this morning. This meat is fresh, and it's spiced to perfection. Here, have one. Why, thank you very much. Mmm, delicious, the stranger exclaimed, with a look of pleasure on his face. What's your secret? This is the best meat pie I've ever had. Well, without telling you too much, the trick is the meat. I only use the freshest, locally sourced meat. It's really made all the difference. Trust me, no other shop in the village does it like I do. Martha said with a mischievous grin. I don't think I've ever seen you around the village. Did you just move here? Martha politely asked the stranger. No, I'm just passing through. First time I've ever been here. As a matter of fact, I have to get back out on the road, the stranger replied. Well, before you leave, how would you like for me to show you how these delicious pies are made and have a tour of my kitchen? And I'll even throw in a couple of complimentary pies for the road. The stranger nodded his head yes, and as she ushered him through the kitchen door, she turned and grabbed her rolling pin from the counter and thought to herself, It's always wise to keep up with fresh supplies. Welcome to Life Cafe. You just died. What life would you like to order next? By Just Human 963 I sit at a table as I wait for the waitress to bring me my check. This isn't my first time, though. I've done this repeatedly. The charges always change, depending on what I do. The faint collection of conversations fills my ears as I sigh, wondering how high the costs are this time around. Sorry for the wait, sir. I hope we see you again, she says with a smile as she sets down my receipt. Gender. Male. Years ordered. Seventy. Breakdown of charges. Years spent in school. Minus thirteen. K through twelve. Minus four. College. Time spent sleeping. Twenty-three. Average is twenty-six, but you lost around three due to work, phone usage, drinking, parties, and various activities leading to less sleep. Years on the phone and other electronics. Twelve. This includes phone calls, texts, social media, music streaming, movie and show streaming, work, video games, etc. Years spent working, 15. Average is 10.2 or 90,000 hours, but varies a lot. You spent many long hours outside and after work getting things done. Years spent married, 8. All time added up through five different marriages, eight years split through four divorces and one spouse death. You spent five years alone after the death. Four children were made with two different mothers. Discounts applied, missed birthdays, missed events for kids, times drunk, drug usage, etc. I fold the receipt in half and set it on the table. Shit. Better luck next time, I suppose. I spent all of that time burnt out in a deadbeat, 
No time was set aside for my family or kids. I called a waiter over and gave him my new order. Perhaps a medieval time period, destined to grow up as a prince, will do some good. To make it spicier, I'll take thirty years of life before being overthrown and killed. At least being set up with a princess will be interesting. I'll just enjoy some coffee before I wake up in that new life. I have all of eternity, anyway. A few tables over, a young couple in their twenties receives a check and summary of their life. Both are still in their wedding attire, still dazed by the car accident. Millions come and go within this expansive complex of tables and servants. All of you have been here before, and we'll all end up here in the end. Work is Hell by Because I Said So Too When the demons appeared, they showed up at crime scenes, nightclubs, and unfortunately for them, churches. They were red, horned, had cloven feet, pointed tails, and smelled like brimstone. Humanity predictably freaked out. The demons were typically attacked and killed, but a percentage were captured and questioned, and we pieced together what was happening. Demons now walked among us. Scientists and pundits offered theories to the contrary, claiming they couldn't be from hell. They were from another dimension, another planet, psychic manifestations from the Gestalt, etc. But the creatures were pretty convincing. They said that hell was full, and that they were formally damned souls sent to earth to have another chance at redemption, and they refused to share much more than that. What they shared was enough, and at the end of a quarantine, most first world countries believed them and attempted to integrate them into society. There was resistance, but there was also government incentives for businesses. Employ one and their salary would be covered and the business would be tax exempt. As the owner of a struggling coffee shop, I hired a demon named Hargathorpe. It got my business some publicity, but it attracted a lot of negative attention. My shop was vandalized, protested, and employees were harassed. It was a damned hassle. So when legislation was passed that made demon-free zones tax-exempt, I let Hargathorpe go. Me and my staff agreed it would be best. We knew he'd be inconvenienced. Jobs were scarce for his kind. They were having difficulty being re-assimilated into society. After letting him go, I'd occasionally see him panhandling or rooting through dumpsters. It wasn't my problem, but I felt bad about it. I heard Hargathorpe had been found frozen under an overpass. It wasn't a huge shock. Eventually, all the demons disappeared. Many violently killed by fundamentalists, but most died from neglect, starving, getting sick from malnutrition, or freezing to death during winter. Then the angel showed up appearing to select people and telling us to share their message with others. One appeared in my cafe. It was beautiful, clothed in flowing robes and glowing with white light. Its bare feet floated a few inches off the ground, and it had huge wings that spread out behind it like a curtain to a celestial show. The angel's face was almost too bright to look at, but I couldn't look away. Its eyes were mesmerizing, and they drilled into mine, seemingly seeing into my soul. When it spoke, it was with a voice that sounded like music, that I could feel in my bones. It said that the demons had been forgiven and were in heaven. Their time on earth had been a test. They had all passed. But their arrival on earth had been a test for humanity, too. One, we failed. Hell wasn't full, after all. 
it was waiting for us. That was the final judgment for humanity, the angel said. And then the angel began to weep. Marzipan Bakery and Cafe by Simba the Savage 8 Five stars. Highly recommended by Allison P. Kids play area for when kids get bored. Red Velvet Cake is delicious. Ten out of ten will go back again. Four stars. Highly recommended by David M. Attended a birthday party there. There's hourly activities for the kids, too, in the play area. Food is excellent. Recommend as a venue for kids' birthday parties. Four stars. Highly recommended by Jesse K. My son Tommy had his birthday party at Marzipan's. They captured his likeness in the cake perfectly. He became so well-behaved after the activities in the play area. Don't know what they taught him, but it must be good. Four stars. Highly recommended by Danielle A. My son changed after participating in the activities in the marzipan play area. He was a troublesome boy, but now he is so well-behaved. Well-mannered, smiles all the time. In fact, he stands at the foot of my bed without moving and greets me every morning. What do they teach there? Etiquette classes? Anyway, I love it. Bring your kids there. One star. Anonymous. Do not bring your kids there. Brought my daughter there after reading some of the reviews. Now she smiles too much. Doesn't even move from the foot of my bed. Even after calling her name. Tried to drag her away and her legs broke. She's in the hospital now. Daniel A. Hard disagree. Who doesn't like well-behaved kids? Marzipan Bakery. We're sorry to hear about that. We make sure your kids are in tip-top condition while attending our classes. Enter the code STOLEN for a free red velvet cake for your next purchase. Four stars. Anonymous. She's smiling. She's always smiling. So well behaved. I need to bring my nephew there. He's always been a bit of a troublemaker. Thanks. Marzipan. Bakery. The New Cafe in Town by 1001 Nights. The new cafe in town was doing booming business, known for its exquisite continental pastries, in particular its specialty, the incomparable Parmentier de Confit de Canard, a French sort of duck cottage pie. Lineup spanned the block, while pre-orders were booked days in advance. Even the fact that the Parmentier cost five times as much as an ordinary pastry, did not deter local gourmets. If anything, it added to the insatiable hunger for this delicacy. Josie had waited for days to pick up her order of Parmentier. Finally, the day came. She went to the tiny but beautifully decorated café, with its vintage prints of the French countryside and rustic, yet elegant wooden chairs and tables, and picked up her pie. She couldn't wait to go home to try it. She walked purposefully to a nearby park, sat on a bench, unwrapped the red and white checked paper, and bit into the delicious, fragrant, meaty pie. She could barely keep her moans of pleasure contained. The meat was so delightful, soft, moist, flavorful, rich melting like butter. She knew then the rumors had to be true. The Parmentier was indeed made of human babies. 
Nothing else could explain this amazing, unique texture and flavor. Despite having every necessary inspection and permit, the rumors wouldn't die down. The cafe owners did a lucrative trade in unwanted babies, and the resulting pies simply flew off the shelves. She paused to take a breath and swallow, and looked at the golden work of art, or what remained of it, in her hands. She knew she would order another one soon. A man wandered up and sat down beside her. Josie frowned. The man ignored her frown, smiled pleasantly, and said, Enjoying your parmentier, des confits des canards? Josie answered curtly, Yes, thank you. Could he not see she wanted to be left alone to enjoy her treat? Apparently not. You know what they say about the Parmentiers, right? Josie darted a look at him, and then at her surroundings. She was not alone. Other people were wandering around. She shrugged. I suppose you mean that they make these with babies? Yes, just a silly rumor. The man nodded. Exactly. You realize it's really made with ducks, right? They take ducks from right here. He gestured at the bunches of silly birds quacking in the park lake. Josie flushed from an emotion she couldn't name, anger or confusion. What are you talking about? The Parmentiers. They are actually made from duck. They just spread the rumor. They're made from unwanted babies to boost the sales. You're lying. They're made from babies. These are baby pies. That's what everybody calls them. The man shook his head and gave her a look of pitying disgust. They're just ducks, Josie. He got up and strolled away. Josie stared at the remainder of the pie, now a pile of golden and meat crumbles. She tossed it to the ducks, who rushed forward to feast and left the park. Big Al's Demon Wins by The Prowler My name is Berwin, Berwin Jones. Berwin? I'm a traveling suppository salesman. Pills, devices, and booklets. Whatever it is that you need to help you go, I've got you covered. No one can beat our blowout prices. I'm traveling through the Midwest as we speak, hitting up rich gated communities and retirement homes, my biggest clientele. After I had been on the road for quite some hours, I heard on the radio a breaking urgent weather warning as I entered Illinois of an impending snowstorm heading my way. I started to get panicked because I was not near a rest stop or roadside motel. Suddenly, to make matters worse, my car blew a flat tire, and I needed to find shelter. I was surrounded by woodland, and not a soul was out. After half a mile on three tires, I finally struck luck and saw an old withered sign advertising Big Al's roadside meats and treats at the next turn. So at the next exit, I turned onto an old side road that looked like it hadn't been maintained in years. Around the bend, I saw the old dilapidated diner sitting amongst its woodland backdrop, abandoned and run down. Well, I won't be getting anything to eat or drink, I guess, I sarcastically thought. Thank goodness I stopped and got a beef stacker burger from a fast food joint called Rita's Beefy Burgers, back on the highway. I pulled up and parked in the front parking spot by the door and got out. The cold winds were already here and blistering the side of my face. I 
I hurriedly made my way to the door and knelt down and stuffed myself into the broken door panel. I was immediately hit with the smell of old decaying grease. I lit my cigarette lighter and decided to explore the room I was going to be spending the night in. It was dark, damp, and eerie, as you might expect. I had to maneuver my way past a few turned-over tables and chairs. The place literally looked as if it had been abandoned for decades. I came to the wall on the far side of the room, next to the doors leading to the kitchen. On the wall, I saw a picture of a few gentlemen hugging each other, surrounding a nice, smiling, portly gentleman who I'm assuming was Big Al. I was beginning to get very cold, and I could hear the hollow winds echoing throughout the decaying building. I thought I'd make my way to the kitchen to see if by any chance any of the burners could be lit to get some kind of heat going. Just as I put my hand on the door, however, I heard some pots and pans start clamoring from the back, loud and continuous banging until an abrupt silence. I stood frozen in fear, cheeks clenched. I didn't know what to do. Then I heard a sharp noise break the silence. Then a loud voice yelled, Hey pal, welcome to Big Al's. I'm Big Al. I pushed open the door and saw that same portly gentleman, except in spirit form. He was covered in sweat and grease, slaving over his eternal stove. Then I heard again a... <coughs> followed by quite the foul smell. What is that noise? I exclaimed, and Big Al laughed. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Just the demon winds, I call them. A cloud of green began to emanate from behind him as he said it. The demon winds turned out to be spectral farts. He said he wanted to do anything in his power to keep me warm from the storm. He said he knew what it was like to die from the cold. He died in the meat locker when the kid on staff accidentally locked him in. Big Al kept me company to pass the storm, telling me stories of the past. And when the sun rose the next morning, he disappeared. While this wasn't a typical scary ghost story, I still met a ghost and had a unique experience to say the least. Something... I will never forget on my travels. Young Love, Unknown Author The first time I saw you, you were running out of breath after walking fast towards the place we decided to meet at. Your dark elbow-length hair was looking amazing with all the snowflakes in it. You rushed to hug me, and I was really glad I'd waited for you. Sorry I'm late. I was anxious before our first date. That's okay. A little waiting won't kill. Talking to you was so easy. Words just appeared in my head, and it wasn't long before you knew practically everything about me. And I knew about your struggle with depression and the little things that made life manageable. We had some borscht at the nearby cafe. But then you said, Why don't we cook some at my place? I'll teach you. Cooking turned out to be more fun than I'd expected. We lost track of time, and I had to sleep over. We became official that day. I was the best thing about every day. At least you said so. I loved you too, but my mental health was only getting worse. It's going to be okay, you said. I really felt like it was, until it was time to go home. I hated that part. I was bottling up my feelings. Your affection made me feel better, but everyone else was hostile. I cried myself to sleep and was nice and polite the next day. This relationship will fix me, I told myself but it didn't look like it. 
so I made a difficult decision. I invited you over to talk. Look, I don't think it'll work out. My depression will make yours worse eventually. I think we should just break up. Don't say that. Whatever happens, I want to be there for you. I had considered that option, yet I was surprised. We talked things through over some tea. You're the best girlfriend I could have asked for. They will soon find us. Hugging, yet cold. I had to do this. After all, wouldn't my death crush you? Otherwise, I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the special friends of the channel for your overwhelming generosity. If you would like to support the channel, the link is below in the description. Also, please send me your stories and poems to duchessofdarkness27 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at duchess.ofdarkness and Twitter at duchessofdarkn2. I want to thank all my listeners for your kindness, your encouragement, and your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.